Welcome back and starting our first segment of Breakfast Show with the press uh, review and we are joined in the studio by Mrs. Nafisa Sabah, Chief Editor of Al Masriya. Hello and good morning. Good morning. Um, first we're going to start with Al Ahram newspaper with President Abdel Fattah Sisi received on Tuesday Lebanese Parliament Speaker uh, Nabih Berri in the presence of uh, Dr. Ali Abdel Al, Speaker of the House of Representatives. President Sisi congratulated Berri on uh, his uh, election to the head of the Arab Parliamentary Union, extending Egypt's appreciation and recognition over Berri's uh, eagerness to hold the first meeting of the organization in uh, Cairo. Mrs. Uh, Nafisa, everybody now is visiting Egypt. <laughs> What's going on? Um, actually, every now is the region is um, in a liquid state, if we can say. It's not solid, it's not uh, stable. And Egypt is a major country in, in the region. So it's very important to, to be part of many agreements and coalitions that are being uh, arranged on different levels economic, uh, military, uh, whatever this kind of uh, cooperation is. Um, Lebanon is a very important country, especially when it comes to the Syrian uh, situation. So, and the Arab Parliament, we are part of the Arab Parliament, so it's, it's, a, it's a cooperation and coordination with the head of the Parliament is uh, something of importance uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a sort of a support from Egypt to the Arab Parliament and a support from Egypt to Nabih Berri to play his role, whether it is inside the Parliament or inside the Lebanese uh, political uh, scene. Okay, uh, moving to El Masri Lyon, where the uh Spokespersons of 19 political parties in Egypt's parliament, the House of Representatives, will meet uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Wednesday to discuss a variety of uh, national issues. The meeting will also include heads of trade unions, professional syndicates, human rights organizations, the National Council for Women, and a number of high-profile media figures. Secretary General of Parliament Ahmed uh, Saad al -Din told reporters Tuesday that Parliament Speaker Ali Abdel Ail and his two deputies, Sayyid al-Sharif and Suleiman Wahdan, will not participate in the meeting. Abdel Ail, the parliamentary spokesperson of the Free Egyptians Party, which uh, holds 65 seats, told reporters that he received an invitation for a meeting with President Sisi on uh, Wednesday. Uh, Bahedin Abu Shoko, the parliamentary spokesperson of the Liberal West Party, which holds 36 seats, told reporters that what welcome President Sisi's invitation. Um, how do you see such a meeting today by uh, uh, public uh, figures, politicians, uh, human uh, rights uh, representatives, and, and other uh, figures? What's the significance of such a meeting? I think it's part of the meetings that had started with some uh, intellectuals. Uh, couple of weeks ago, I think, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, that had started to sort of re-evaluate um, the situation, the internal Egyptian situation and how to deal with different problems. And the combination of politicians, human rights, activists, and trade unionists is something uh, uh, hints that this is part of what's going to be discussed. So actually we lack politics in Egypt. The political life in Egypt is almost dead. So and without having a real political life in Egypt things would be very dangerous because there is no strong street behind anyone, whether it's the regime or not. So it's it's very dangerous. No one would support any action or decision when it's needed, this kind of support is needed. Uh, the, the next point is the human rights activists and the trade unionists. While we have very, uh, a bad, we have a bad situation on, on those uh, files, on the human rights uh, uh, record in Egypt, and as for the trade unions and the, very, the recent attack against the, the independent trade unions. So having a real dialogue and sincere, frank dialogue is very, is very crucial 
to, for us, for Egypt, to continue. I wish that uh, the Tehran and Sun Fear Christ would be uh, part of the discussions uh, today. At least what happened, how it went through, um, reaching the, 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 the latest declaration of, uh, about the, the two islands. It's very important to be frank and be transparent to the people. It's, it's not about a governmental uh, issue. Whether we are talking about this, the sovereignty of the, the previously sovereignty of Egypt, of Tehran and Sanofi, or the human rights uh, record, or the political life, or the trade union's uh, uh, situation, it's, it's, all, it's not about the government or the regime, it's about all the people of Egypt. They have the right to know actually what's going on, where we are planning to head on all those uh, levels. Okay, uh, uh, Mrs. Nafisa, we are going to El Shuru, a newspaper where we read Speaker of Cyprus uh, Parliament said uh, uh, while visiting Cairo on Tuesday that Cyprus is ready to be an ambassador for Egypt with European bodies. During his stay in Cairo, uh, the Speaker uh, said, uh, met with uh, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri as well as Speaker of Egypt's Parliament, Ali Abdelal. The two speakers signed a memorandum of, of understanding for cooperation between uh, the two parliaments. Um, also, what's the significance uh, and the timing of the visit uh, for the uh, speakers uh, of Parliament of Cyprus? I think it, it has to be something about the marine uh, uh, lines between mm -hmm. Cyprus and, and Egypt. The borders, course, again, that was discussed borders. before. Exactly. So it's, it's also for in, uh, concerning cooperation, economic cooperation. But I think we do not have the needed detailed uh, details of the agreements and the discussions. Mm, it's, it's a part of so many files about economic cooperation and investments, we do not have its details. I'm not sure whether it's about the, the regime that's not giving out the, the information or it's partially, I'm, I'm sure it's partially part of the media who is not reaching out to bring the information, mm -hmm. the, the needed information. So, cooperation with any country is very important. Having as many countries as we can, uh, as partners on different levels, is very crucial to Egypt and would help us to be strong again, especially in our current economic uh, situation. But still, until now, the details needed on how, what kind of cooperation projects, we have just titles. Um, the numbers that are being declared are very huge, which means um, a plus if they are being applied in um, um, a way that w the benefits would go back to the majority of the Egyptian. It's not about the businessmen or a limited group of people or organizations. So knowing where we are going to is based on the details of every individual agreement or cooperation or memo of understanding we are signing. It's a good sign that there are different kinds and levels of cooperation with different countries in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in the Arab region and Middle East. It's, it's a very good sign. Still, whether it's going to be real benefit on the ground or not in the help big this benefit would be and when it's going to happen. It's, it's about the details of everything. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving to the uh, newspaper where Foreign Minister Samah Shukri said on Tuesday that the case of the Italian student who was killed in Cairo in January remains open. Shukri said at a press conference that there is keenness from the Egyptian and Italian sides to reach the truth uh, and determine the uh, culp uh, culprits uh, behind the murder of the 28-year-old PhD student Jolie Regini. He stressed that the exceptional cooperation was still ongoing uh, between Egyptian and Italian investigators due to the special relationship between uh, the two countries. While this uh, uh, issue of Jolie Regini is so uh, complicated, uh, why it's still opened? Why there are many whys in this story? It has to be open until we reach uh, who killed Regini. Uh, so Declaring that it is still open and there is some kind of cooperation is sort of 
an Egyptian declaration of the will to continue in cooperation. So we have to admit our mistakes in, the, in dealing with this case before. Egypt did not deal with a very dangerous and bad situation with the due way of dealing with it. I'm not talking about the investigation. I have no clue about that. But it's about how we dealt with the whole case through the media and through the cooperation and communication between Egypt and Italy. So many stupid statements had been declared from maybe uh, different local, uh, uh, different Egyptian officials or official sources actually. So whether it's named or not named the sources. So we need a real, a real way of commitment and to be reflected in our statements and our movements so that it's, it's not about Italy, it's about the European Union, it's about the Egyptian reputation, the Egyptian authorities' reputation. We do not want to lose our reputation, we do not want to lose Europe. It's, it's not Italy again, it's the European Union and if so, it's, it's almost half the world. Mm. It's crucial to Egypt, but Please, number one, we have to admit that we have dealt with it. With, we have committed so many mistakes in the way we run this fight before. So at least the, other, the Italian partners can understand that we are heading to a new start regarding dealing with this fight. Hmm. Okay, um, moving to Al Ahram online when Egypt's foreman, the House of Representatives, is uh, soon expected to review a new technical deal aimed at drawing the maritime border between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. The deal, which leaves the two Red Sea islands of Tehran and uh, Sanafir within the regional waters of Saudi Arabia, has left MPs divided. While some MPs agree that the two uh, islands are historically part of Saudi Arabia's regional waters, others say the deal must be put on a public uh, referendum. What's your opinion about this? matter of uh, Tehran and uh, Sanafir and uh, uh, do you agree that it must be put on a public uh, referendum or it's out of uh, it's negotiations? Of, it's part of sovereignty. So uh, we have two cases. <coughs> if it is part of sovereignty, which is absolutely agreed upon, it used to be until today, it, it's part of the Egyptian sovereignty. And the other part is about the ownership. So it's about discussing and really proving that it's not the ownership of Egypt. This is the first step. With real historical valid, uh, historical and geographic uh, proofs. So if it is proved to be Saudis, so it's a sovereignty matter, so it has to go to a referendum. If it proved or that it is Egyptian, or at least the proof of its being Saudi is not that valid. So no referendum is valid and no parliament is entitled to sign such an agreement and no president or government is entitled to do it based on the Egyptian constitution. So you know, discussing this matter is very important, it has to be transparent, it has to be very wise in, in the way it's being used. It's, it's touching every single Egyptian person. And it's very humiliating to see that so many Egyptian officials and media workers are all of a sudden fighting that those islands are Saudis. I think it's, it's logic if I hear Saudi figures are saying this. But Egyptian figures Egyptian uh, personalities, well-known personalities, public figures are defending the Saudi ownership to those uh, islands is something actually many Egyptians consider it humiliating to their uh, to themselves to, and to their country mm -hmm. and to their history. It's very sensitive to all Egyptians, especially we have lost soldiers fighting defending those islands and defending Egypt. So it cannot be just decided like this. And it can, in, in actually, in a way that's not going pretty well with the Constitution. It's not logic at 
uh, at least it's not even, you know, have been, it has not been discussed or declared before. Uh, so it was very shocking on, on, on so many levels. And it's not about the parliamentarian members who have different points of view, actually. Parliamentarians are not experts when it comes to history and the geography. But still, we can judge using experts and uh, being able to have a, lo a real look to the documents that prove or not prove that th those islands belong to Egypt or, or to Saudi Arabia. What we have here is that some documents saying a letter from the Saudi, uh, a king to the Egyptian partners, actually. A letter from one country to another country is not a proof of ownership. So we need to really consider it. We do not want to lose our uh, relationship, a very good and unique relationship to Saudi Arabia. It's very important for both Egypt and Saudi Arabia and for the whole region. So it needs to be really, really, really considered in a very logic and uh, transparent way. Okay, moving to El Wabd newspaper where we read Egypt's main index inched down on Tuesday for the third session in a row with local investors registered as the only net sellers. The stock market's bench Egypt's 30 declined slightly 0.16% and uh, in a trade that witnessed the plunge of four major sectors, telecommunications, uh, food and beverages, financial services and banks, out of 170 securities listed for the day 75 shares so gains of 49 went down. Daily turnovers were, was modest, registra registering uh, 437 uh, Egyptian, uh, million, uh, million Egyptian pounds. And also in El Ahram, we read Egypt's conditional cash transfer programs. Uh, Karama and Takeful reached half a million poor Egyptian families last month. State news agency Mena reported on Tuesday, citing Minister of Social Solidarity. Uh, Reda uh, Weli, the cash aid which is supported by $400 uh, million World Bank loan to Egypt was this uh, burst starting April 2015 in the upper Egyptian provinces for Siut and Suhag before being expanded to cover other uh, government rates. How do you see the... Uh, um, we only have uh, one minute, the, uh, the stock market is up and down and uh, varies. There is no uh, certain... Um, I don't know, criteria for the stock market that can we uh, learn about? It's, it's part of the general situation in Egypt and in the region. Mm -hmm. So if we can really need to predict what's going to happen and plan for the stock market, we have to have a steady and solid political and economic situation, which is still we do not have until today. We're much better, of course, we're much better. But still we are not that stable. We need more to, to be able to... Uh, well, uh, Mrs. Nafisa Al-Sabah, Chief Editor of Al-Masriya, thank you very much for joining us and welcome once again to Breakfast Show. Yeah. And uh, this brings us to the end of our press review, so please stay tuned. <laughs>